Today we tested four different Kelford cams on a 2JZ to find out which would be the right one for your application under 1000 horsepower. For those of you new to the channel, first, thanks for checking us out. And those returning, you might already know that we have this engine dyno in-house that we've been using very, very extensively recently. And because of that, we have the opportunity to monitor things like constant conditions and be able to replicate data and be able to present it in a very scientific way. Now, one of the reasons that we wanted to start this type of test was because we had a lot of questions from people at home like you guys. I'm going to read one out, actually, that we have right in front of us. I have a 3-liter 2JZ with a precision turbo 6466. I assume that they're using in the next gen given all the new turbochargers that are out there. What cams and boosts are best for me and how much power should I expect? I think that's a fantastic question and it's actually a super relatable setup. The 2JZ in a 6466 combined mode that makes near 1000 horsepower is a phenomenal starting point for any type of race car. It's going to be responsive, it's going to make great power, and you can use it in so many different ways. Now for this, we wanted to test four different camshafts that are popular from Kelford. Now from these four popular camshafts, I think that the best one for pe most people like this would be the T202-C. But it's a little more involved than just saying, go for this camshaft. And there is actually a, a section where we had another camshaft that made more power. But before we actually just give you a blanket response and why, we want to break down the data and show you the behind the scenes. For today's test procedure, we have a 3 liter 2JZ with a completely unported cylinder head. This is a non-VVTI GTE head and has 9 to 1 compression ratio. The turbocharger being used today is a Precision 6466 HP cover next gen turbo with a T4 divided 115AR back housing. And that'll be used with Plasma Man's intake manifold with a 72 millimeter throttle body as well as Plasma Man's air to air intercooler. Speaking of constants, before every run, we do verify that we are within a range. Things like oil temperature, water temperature, ambient air temperature, and all matches between the tests. If you guys want a breakdown of all of that information, check out our blog post so we can show you the written data. For today's testing, we're going to be running you through four popular Kelford cam options for non-VVTI 2JZ. That'll include their B cam, C cam, D cam, and F cam. Given that the engine will react differently at various boost levels, we will be raising the boost for each camshaft incrementally. Our first round of testing will be at one bar of boost, in other words, targeting 14 and a half PSI or 100 kPa if that's how you understand it. Right off the bat, we notice that all camshaft options react similarly in the lower RPM areas, except for the F-cam. This wasn't too surprising as we know that the F-cam offers a higher lift and duration over the other three options, and from what we see in the increased horsepower and torque, we do see an increase in back pressure as well. At this point, it wasn't too much of a concern, but it is something to note. It's also worth noting that the B camshaft fell the most short at high RPM despite having the lowest back pressure of the four, and ever so slightly more boost between all of the four cam options there at a peak of 13.9 PSI. We would typically reach for the B camshaft around that 400 to 700 horsepower range as Kelford recommends those B camshafts for anything on a 54 to a 64 millimeter turbocharger. We see this reflected in the graph here as all the camshafts are performing similarly at that level until roughly 550 horsepower where we see an increase in lift and duration of the larger camshafts start to show power gains. Another thing to note there, even at 14 PSI, on this specific application, the 6466 is already slightly above its 1 to 1 pressure ratio. Now further increasing the boost on these runs, we do start to see an increase in back pressure on the larger camshafts especially, but not to an area of concern yet. We typically start to feel a little bit of concern around 1.4 or 1.5 to 1 pressure ratio. In other words, that'll be 14 or 15 PSI of back pressure for every 10 pounds of boost.
You can see that at over 700 horsepower, there's substantial gains to be had, but with the B cam falling away in the last 1500 RPM. Now at this level of 200 kPa or targeting 29 psi, we do see that all four camshafts are struggling to maintain a lower than 1.5 to 1 back pressure to boost ratio. Now at that 200 kPa or 29 psi target, we can see that the C and D cam performed very, very similarly. Now going back to what we had mentioned earlier about back pressure and boost ratio, now we've reached a point where all the camshafts are roughly just under 1.5 to 1 pressure ratio. Now you may be telling yourself at home, I have extra boost on tap, should I just add more on top of what we're already running? You have to also recognize for every, at this point, pound of boost that you are adding, you are adding also at least 1.5 pounds of back pressure. Those returns are now diminished as the added boost is making less horsepower per pound than the boost that you have already added earlier in the run. Now another thing to note is that we are also simultaneously monitoring turbo speed so that we can follow Precision's guidelines on what speed to have as a max RPM. In this particular case, for these last runs, we were only at 77% of Precision's recommended max turbo speed. For this specific application, we've already established that the 1.5 to 1 pressure ratio has already been achieved, and we likely wouldn't want to run an engine like this past that shaft speed of 77% that we're currently at. But just for the sake of this video, we're going to go ahead and increase the boost. What we want you to take away from this is that we added 9 psi of boost, only produced 43 more peak horsepower, and increased exhaust pressure by 26 psi. You'll notice here that we didn't overlay this same boost target with the F cam, given that it is aimed at roughly 2,000 horsepower or more from Kelford. It did not produce a clean run that we could pull meaningful data from. We find that the 6466's optimal usage window to be roughly 600 to 850 horsepower, where it operates between 1.0 to 1.5 to 1 engine pressure ratios. The C cam demonstrated gains over the smaller camshaft with only minimal losses over the larger camshafts in the same window, suggesting that it is the right choice for this power level and engine size. This is a great one size fits most option for any 2JZ owner looking to target this power level. Obviously, there are many ways to generate horsepower and our goal is to help you understand when different components are appropriate so that you can match your components together and reach the best outcomes. We hope that you found this information useful and we have two more tests like it coming for the Precision 6870 and the 7275 next gen units. So stay tuned for more of those results. And if you did enjoy this type of content, please let us know in the comments down below as well as shopping with us next time that you're in the market for for some car parts. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.